Hey everybody, so a couple of years ago it became very popular to turn plastic into fuel and it's a stupidly easy thing to do. The first thing to do is to find yourself some plastic. These are milk bottles, which means they're HDPE, or high density polyethylene. You can also use plastic bags. Chop them up into small pieces and there's about two centimeters by two centimeters square. And when you've chopped them all up, you'll end up with this. What you do then is stick that into a paint can. Then we can pop a lid on that and the lid's got a piece of copper pipe sticking out of it which will go to a condenser which has a coiled bit of copper that will help everything cool down. Then we give it some heat. So you can do this with all kinds of things. Actually, you can do it with tires as well. But HDP is particularly good because it leaves no residue. Styrene's work well, any kind of plastic this will happen with because the plastic has no water in it to be driven off and no volatiles. So it cooks down to a goo and then it begins to break up and then it begins to distill. When you've given it a while, you can take the lid off. When you take the lid off, what you'll find is pretty much nothing. There'll be a little bit of plastic left. And this is what happens with HDPE. Other materials will leave residues, but this is really what you get. The liquid, while still warm, will be a liquid, and we're pouring it into a jar with a wick. However, when it cools down, it'll solidify into a wax. This is more common with HDPG. You see other people making diesel fuels, but actually most plastics create this waxy substance. The wax is a fuel in itself, and if we cut that down to a wick, we can turn this into a candle, and it'll just burn like a candle burns. But that tends to be the product of plastic destructive st distillation, which is exactly what we've just done. There you go. It'll burn for ages. I personally think that's pretty cool, but it has received a fair amount of criticism, and that's fair enough, because you're making a fuel from old plastics, but you need to burn quite a lot of wood to make that destructive distillation process progress, so it's using a lot of energy to create it. And of course, if you're less than careful about collecting those gases, you could be chucking some pretty horrible things into the atmosphere, and at the end of the day, all you actually do with this stuff is burn it, and that's you know, perhaps not the best of things to do with any resource. So, big question, how can we improve that? And is there anything we could do with that waxy product apart from burn it? And the answer to that is yes, of course, or I wouldn't be doing this video. And this paper came out and is receiving a lot of attention this week on the production of a spider-like silk from that waxy substance we got as the product of our distillation. In the paper, they follow pretty much the same procedure that we just did. They get themselves some HDPE, they cut it into small squares, and then they destructively distill it. But instead of doing it directly in a paint can, what they do is use a catalyst. And the catalyst they use is strontium titanium trioxide, and that reduces the temperature needed, and so the amount of fuel that you use, in order to distill the HDPE into a waxy product. The next step, the researchers at the Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute of New York, where this was developed, is to ferment it. The bacteria used is Pseudomonas originosa. That and the wax is put into a flask and left for 72 hours. Essentially, the bacteria use the wax as food and turn it into a silk-like protein. The biological process behind this innovation is something people have employed for millennia. Fermentation is used to make all kinds of things and preserve foods like cheese, bread and wine, beer and penicillin. What's really exciting about this process is that unlike the way plastics are produced today, the process is low energy and doesn't require the use of toxic chemicals. The best chemists in the world could not convert polyethylene into spider silk, but these bacteria can. What they're really doing is harnessing what nature has developed to do manufacturing for us. After 72 hours, you strain off the bacteria, freeze dry it, and what you end up with is a material that looks like torn up cotton balls, and that's ready to spin into a silk thread. 
You can think of spider silk as nature's Kevlar. It can be nearly as strong as steel under tension. However, it's six times less dense than steel, so it's very lightweight. As a bioplastic, it's stretchy, tough, non-toxic, and biodegradable. Spider silk is already woven into fabric called golden silk. It used to be made into body armour, and it is bulletproof. So this paper shows that we can use bacteria and fermentation, something we've been doing for millennia, to recycle plastics into a useful product, something more than just pressing it into more plastic or quite simply burning it. And I found that very exciting and interesting. Of course, there's more work to do on it before it's a commercial scale, but that is awesome stuff. I thought I would share it with you because it really caught my imagination. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.